This evening, in honor of His Royal Highness, I should like to present to you something never before seen in this part of the world, something very dangerous. Your Royal Highness, my lords, ladies, and gentlemen, I give to you my greatest challenge, the Chinese water torture cell. shackles. Then I will be hoisted up and lowered into the water-filled chamber. And finally, the wooden shackles will be secured to the top of the chamber, thereby effectively locking me in. I have enlisted the services of these constables to ensure that my shackles are genuine. Gentlemen, what is your opinion? As far as I can see, Mr. Houdini, they appear to be genuine. Thank you, gentlemen. Previously, Mr. Houdini has demonstrated the ability to hold his breath underwater for just over two minutes. In order to make sure that the trick does not continue longer than that time, we have secured the services of Dr. Norman Allworth, Chief Astronomer of the Greenwich Observatory, whose accuracy in matters of time is world-renowned. Are you ready, Mr. Houdini? gentleman who first introduced this illusion to Mr. Houdini. In the event that Mr. Houdini is unable to free himself in the allotted two minutes, Mr. Lin Pao will use his broad axe to smash open the chamber. One minute. While the water torture escape has been performed in China for 10 centuries, Mr. Houdini is the first Occidental ever to attempt it. One minute, 30 seconds. This illusion has taken the lives of more than a dozen men. But I am sure that Mr. Houdini will be all right. But just in case, Mr. Lin Pao, is your axe ready? Two minutes. <laughs> It's 20 seconds. Two minutes, 30 seconds. Break the glass, quickly.
Thank you, thank you. <laughs> impossible. Absolutely impossible. Simply a trick, Arthur. Don't believe it. That was not simply a trick. It was. How do you do it, then? Now you know that I can't tell you that. And I don't believe you. There must be more to it than simple trickery. What can I say to convince you? Well, could tell me the truth. Very well. Since you insist. Ah, at last, eh? The Chinese water torture is an illusion and nothing more. Oh, blasted it, Dean, it was real. It had to be. Come now, Arthur. Do you think that I made myself dematerialize or something, huh? I could believe that. <laughs> Did you? There is nothing mystical about what I do. There is nothing mystical about me. I am a man, just like you. There's more to it. I'm convinced of that. Oh. Arthur, will you never give up your belief in all this mystical hocus-pocus, hmm? Have you never wondered about it yourself, Houdini? Hmm? Wondered about the unexplainable, fantastical, the truly magical? Have you never had an experience that gave you pause for thought? Hmm? A brush with the mystical. What are, you, what are you thinking about, Houdini? Confound it, Houdini! What is it? Tell me. Now that I think about it, there was something. What, what, what was it? It was something when I was a boy. It was, as you say, a brush with the mystical. I've never told this to anyone, Arthur. And you must promise me that you will let it go no further. Well, I, I, I promise, on my honor. Now tell me, what was it? It is the most fantastic story you will ever hear. Many years before I took the name Harry Houdini, I was Eric Weiss. I lived with my family in a small town in Wisconsin called Appleton. Juan, get out of here and stay out! Even at a young age, I was on my way to becoming the greatest magician in the world, playing some of the grander houses in the area, performing wondrous and mystifying feats of daring for the local citizenry. My brother, Theo, was my most able master of ceremonies. Gentlemen, what you are about to witness it's a feat of daredevilry never before seen in this part of the world. Those with weak hearts should take their leave now. I give you Eric, Prince of the Air. as they are today, my audiences in the beginning were very receptive. But difficult to keep entertained, so I embarked on that area of performance for which I would become famous.
Gentlemen, what you are about to witness is a feat of amazement, never before seen anywhere in the world. I give you Eric the Great. Within seconds, Eric the Great will free himself from these unbreakable bonds. Are you ready, Eric? Ready. Then let the illusion begin. Five seconds. Are you free, Eric? Almost. Five more seconds. Ten seconds. Are you free, Eric? Just about. Why do you do these things, Eric? Why do you pull these crazy stunts? Because I'm in training, Papa. I'm going to be the greatest magician in the world. Mr. O'Casey has been good enough to take you on as an apprentice. Take advantage of it and forget about magic. But I can be rich and famous. A good locksmith, Mr. O'Casey, tells me can earn five, six hundred dollars a year. The great Merlin himself, I heard, earns two thousand dollars a year. Merlin, indeed. Eric, I want you to be happy and have a good life. But forget about dreams. They have a nasty habit of not coming true. So no more talk about magic. Agreed? Yes, Papa. Ah, you know, Eric, me boy, there's poetry in Knox. Sheer, blissful poetry. I, I'm going out to the water pump for a drink. Here, Eric, my boy, and I'll be out in 15, uh, half an hour. Yes, Mr. O'Casey. Mm -hmm. Eric! Eric! Eric, you'll never guess who's right here in Appleton. Who? Well, guess! I don't want to guess, Theo. Who is it? All right, one hint. His first name is the Great. The Great Merlin? The Great Merlin is here in Appleton? In person. He's at the hotel. He stopped off on his way to Chicago. What are we waiting for? Let's go. The show's over. Let's go. Just a minute, Theo. Just a minute. Ah, good day to you, young man. Good day, sir. Don't tell me. Let me guess. You, sir, are a fellow magician. Am I right? Well, sort of. Perhaps you can help me with something else. You didn't see me flip the coin behind my hand like that, or twist it back into my palm like that, did you? No, sir. 
Tyson. Oh, perhaps I'm not losing my touch after all. Well, goodbye to you, young man. We magicians must stick together. He knew I was a fellow magician. He knew just by looking at me. Wait till I show this trick to Mama. Mama, Mama. What is it, Eric? Eric can make money appear out of thin air. Not boys. No, Mama. I can, really. Watch. How did you do that? Magic. And watch this. Watch what else I can do. You're a magician. When did you learn that trick, Eric? I just made it up. Pretty good, huh? For you, Mama. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Wonderful indeed. You'll have to make money appear out of thin air because you'll never earn it any other way. Samuel, what is it? What's wrong? Your son has just been fired from his job. Mr. O'Casey says he hasn't got time for boys who run off. If Eric doesn't want to learn the trade, there are plenty of other boys in town who do. Go to your room, Eric. But, Papa... Go to your room. You know, Eric... I don't think Papa means to be mean. I just think he wants what's best for all of us. I know that. So maybe being a locksmith won't be so bad after all. I can't be a locksmith, Theo. I'm a magician. I was gonna let you leave without me now, did you? Theo, you scared me half to death. Don't do that anymore, okay? All right. Well, let's go before someone wakes up. You can't come with me. You've got to stay here and look after Mama and Papa. They need you. And don't give me any trouble. I told you not to do that anymore. Where are you going? To Chicago. The great Merlin is there, and I'm going to ask him to take me on as his apprentice. But you need me. I'm... Who's going to be your assistant? I'll hire someone. Now go home. Goodbye for me. 
another train to hop. All right, everybody out. Everybody out now. Let's go. Hear me? If I have to come in there, you're going to get the beating of your life. Understand me? You know what's good for you? You'll hightail it out of here before the yard bow gets back. Can you hear me, kid? Get out of here. Scram! What are you doing? You, sir, are about to witness a feat of escapism never before seen in this part of the world. Hey, you! Get away from there! Whatever you're doing, you better hurry it up. It usually doesn't take this long. Slats Carson, what's yours? Eric Weiss. Pleased to meet you, Eric. Where'd you learn to pick a lock like that? I'm a magician. Oh, yeah? Can you make us disappear? Not yet, but I'm working on it. Hello, officers. I thought Chicago would be bigger than this. <laughs> it is. What do you mean? Chicago's a lot bigger than this, kid. This is Kansas City. Kansas City? But I don't want to be in Kansas City. I want to be in Chicago. You must have hopped the wrong train, kid. Come on.
neighbors, citizens, gather around and prepare to be astounded, to disbelieve your eyes, to have your lives changed forever. For we together are about to enter into a world of mystery and wonder, of sorcery and legerdemain. And I, your very humble servant, Dr. Tibble Grimaldi, peerless mysteriarch of the plains, will act as guide and interpreter. And now, without any further ado, good citizens, for the first time in North America, I present to you the Palingenesia the dismemberment and regeneration of the human form. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you may think you see before you an ordinary wooden cabinet. You are wrong. This is no ordinary cabinet. This is a cabinet of death, a hellish trap of doom whose gaping jaws await only a tender morsel, a dear, sweet, ingenuous child, pulchritudinous and tender of age, and mine own granddaughter, the fair flower, Calpurnia. Any questions? None? Excellent. Are you ready, my dearest child? Yes, Grandfather, I'm ready. Then, brave child, Go into the box. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I shall insert into the cabinet these blades forged of the finest steel. Their razor-sharp edges, thirsting for blood, hungering for flesh. I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Excuse me. And yet, can this be true? She lives. Are you all right, my dearest Calpurnia? Yes, Grandfather. Although I must admit I feel a bit scattered. Scattered, you say? Well, well, well. I shall rectify that immediately. Calpurnia, Calpurnia. Never had I heard such a beautiful name. I could hardly wait for this vision of loveliness to be reassembled. I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, I have performed this trick over a thousand times. And I have yet to misplace a part. And now, one, two, three. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Palingenesia. Totally reassembled and apparently none the worse for her terrifying experience, the radiant Calpurnia. I thank you. I thank you. <laughs> In return for the miracle you have witnessed this evening, I ask no recompense, but merely your kind indulgence a moment longer to introduce to you Chief Grable.
medicine man of the legendary Minotuk Indian tribe. The noble gentleman you see here tonight is the creator of the most remarkable tonic the world has ever known, wizard oil. Ladies and gentlemen, I call your attention to the bottle which I hold in my hand. The miracle of the ages, good friends, the magic elixir of the Minotuk. And what do we ask for this amazing potion? A king's ransom? Never. A double eagle? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Wizard oil, the sovereign remedy of the Minotuk Indian. The purest, safest, most effective medicine known to the white man's world can be yours, good citizens, for the meager sum of 25 cents, one quarter of a dollar. Five dollars. A good day's work indeed. Ah, the miracle of the ages. You know, John, this is grand stuff, but I do believe the only thing it cures is thirst. Ow! Who goes there? Identify yourself immediately. Eric Weiss, sir. Weiss? Weiss? Do I know you, Mr. Weiss? No, sir. It's Dr. Grimaldi. Then why are you lurking in my bushes like a sneak thief? Well, I saw the show, sir. And, well, I was wondering um, if you might need someone. Well... Spit it out, lad. I haven't got all night. I want a job, sir. I want to join your world of wonders. Well, you could have saved yourself that bump on the noggin, Mr. Weiss. I have nothing available. But I'm a magician. Watch closely. Not bad. Not bad at all, Mr. Weiss. But I have plenty of those. Wow. Do you have any other talents worth mentioning, Mr. Weiss? I'm also an escape artist. I can escape from anything. Really? Anything? Yes, sir. Anything. Hmm. John, get us some rope. That's Grey Wolf, medicine man of the Minotuk, isn't it? Creator of the most remarkable tonic the world has ever known. You're a most observant fellow, Mr. Weiss. That is Grey Wolf, but he prefers to be called by his Christian name, John Parker. John is a full-blooded Minotuk. A fierce race of nut tires, the Minotuk. If you can get out of his bindings, you can call yourself an escape artist without pretense. Hello, John Parker. My name's Eric Weiss. Doesn't he speak English? John, unfortunately, is mute. He understands everything you say, but he is unable to reply. Very well, you may begin. Grandfather, is supper ready? Oh, hello there. What are you doing here? Hello. Are you and Mr. Weiss acquainted, my dear? We met this morning in the city, although he was in quite a hurry, so we haven't been formally introduced. Ah. Mr. Weiss, my granddaughter, the radiant blossom, Calpurnia. Very nice to meet you, Mr. Weiss. Grandfather, why is Mr. Weiss tied up? He is auditioning for a position as escape artist, my dear. Do you think a genuine escapist would be a worthy addition to our show? I think it would be a wonderful addition. Continue, Mr. Weiss.
I told you I could do it. So you did. So you did. Well, then, you have yourself a job. That kind of determination deserves a reward. Perhaps we'll have you do that trick in the show. Thank you, sir. But, Mr. Weiss. Yes, sir? You're going to have to learn to do it a lot faster. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And so it was that I found gainful employment with Grimaldi's World of Wonders and Miracle Medicine show. I was to receive the princely sum of 2% of the gross receipts per week in compensation for an assortment of duties, all unspecified. The road west was interminable, the transportation uncomfortable, and the food at most times indigestible, but none of it mattered in the least. For at last, I was in show business. You know, Eric, you remind me of me at your age. Earnest, diligent, extremely well-intentioned, but with just a touch of the scoundrel that leaves us unwilling to follow the common path. My own father, for example, wanted me to become a cooper, a barrel maker. Can you imagine Dr. Tibble Grimaldi making barrels? Neither could I. Though, of course, with a little diligent application, I no doubt would have become the greatest barrel maker in the world. But my heart just wasn't in it. And after all, that's what's important, what's in here. Even with magic, anybody can do tricks, Eric. The real magic comes from a magician who has spirit, who has vision, who has heart. Never forget that, Eric. Nobody had ever spoken to me like that before. Here, at last, was someone who understood what I'd been dreaming about all my life. Magic. But there's one more thing you should learn as a member of this august company. What's that? How to handle a team of horses. Just keep them pointed in the direction of Abilene. I'm going to lie down. All this talk of magic has exhausted me. I brought you something to eat. Oh, thank you. It's very nice of you. She sat beside me. There was a strange stirring in my stomach. I assumed it was love, although at that time in my life I had nothing to compare it to. day, isn't it? Oh, I wanted to speak, to dazzle her with a torrent of impressive thoughts, but found myself struck dumb in her presence, so I uttered the only thing that came to mind. This is a very good apple. I wanted to throw myself under the hooves of the horses. I was so embarrassed. And yet, I took consolation in the thought that our relationship could only improve. I missed my family desperately and kept up a regular correspondence. I was beginning to feel very much at home with the Grimaldi troupe. I'd already fallen completely in love with Calpurnia. And I felt as close to Dr. Grimaldi as if he were my own father. But John Parker was a different story. Him I couldn't figure out. I was inexplicably drawn to him, and he knew it. Well, well, night has fallen. It's off to bed for the good doctor. We have a long trip ahead of us. Good night, Eric, my boy. Good night, sir. 
Keep at it, lad. You'll master it one day, I'm sure. John? John? Take it easy, Wolf. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Oh, boy. Morning. Time to get up, Eric, my boy. It's almost 6.30 and we have a lot of work to do. I have a new trick to show you. Came to me in the night, positively inspirational. But first, nourishment. Eric, go fetch some water. John, old fellow, let's get started with that breakfast, huh? I'm sorry. Don't go. You don't have to go. What's wrong, Calpurnia? Is there anything I can do? I don't think so. Unless you know a trick to get someone out of a marriage. What do you mean, marriage? Whose marriage? Mine, I'm afraid. You're getting married? When? To who? man who lives in the town of Ellsworth. Oh. But I don't love him. I hardly even know him. How can you marry him? A year ago, our wagons were destroyed in a fire when we were in Ellsworth. A man named Johnson offered to lend us some money in order to rebuild. But Grandfather didn't have anything to use as collateral. The man's son had been trying to court me since we got to town. 
So, I offered myself as collateral. But didn't Dr. Gamaldi object? Of course he did. He refused to even consider it. But I insisted. We needed the money, Eric. There was no other choice. I feel as badly about this as you do, my boy. In fact, I have taken steps to remedy this situation. Over the year, I have accumulated a sum which I hope Mr. Johnson, as a gentleman, will accept as a down payment. But what if he doesn't accept? We must continue to think positively, Eric. Are you still in there, my boy? The panel's stuck. I can't get it open. I'm a reasonable man. Mr. Johnson is a reasonable man. We shall be reasonable together. But we don't have to go to Ellsworth. We could go somewhere else. A little slow, but not bad for your first time. We could go to, to Coffeeville, or to Topeka, or to Dodge City. They'd never find us. We could go all the way to California. A fine idea, Eric, but they would find us no matter where we went. We're not exactly traveling incognito, you know. All right, let's try it again, and this time, kindly remember to close the bottom panel when you leave. But she doesn't love him. Eric, everything will be fine, I promise you. I'm not exactly lacking in powers of persuasion, now, am I? Yes, sir. Good lad. Now, what do you think of the trick? It's fine. But I think I know a way that we can make it a little more exciting. So far, so good. Excellent! Excellent! So what'd you think? Terrifying. Having the rope break was positively genius. You've taken a standard trick and turned it into something sensational. Eric, my boy, I think you've got a future in this business of ours. John, you'd better get started on a new trunk. We're going to debut this trick in our very next stop. And so, gentlemen, let me present my newest and most sensational discovery. An escape artist unparalleled in the history of magic. Gentlemen, please welcome Eric the Stupendous. Hey, he's just a kid. A kid, you say? Young, perhaps, in years, but ancient in experience, for no mere child could possibly perform the feat you're about to witness. An escape he has brought all the way from his native... Uh, uh, Bulgaria. Yes, all the way from Bulgaria. And now I will confer with Eric in his native tongue. Nugvag istasosmin, Eric. What? Go along with it. It makes the trick more exotic. Clarn. Clarn. Yes, of course, Clarn. Eric says, on with the trick. And now, if one of you gentlemen will kindly step up here and examine this trunk, you will find it to be a sturdy enclosure. I'll do it. This seems okay to me. <laughs> no one can get out of that. <laughs> ah, but you're wrong, sir. Eric will escape in a flash. I got a $20 gold piece, says he can. <laughs> a wagering man, <laughs> eh? Uh, yes, yeah, so let me uh, take this up with Eric. Iglats, Lord Befaven. Flap Grodden. Eric says <laughs> he accepts. And now, gentlemen, prepare to be astounded. Eric, if you please. Yo! 
don't mind if I do that, do you? Not at all, sir. Here is the padlock. Don't need it. Okay, kid, down you go. Get in there. Luke, bring me some of that heavy chain. What is this? Just a little something to make sure this is on the square. It's supposed to be regular, sir. <laughs> Come on. Open it. All right, you guys get on that rope over there and hoist it up. I appreciate your assistance, sir, but really, this padlock is made of the finest steel available and is more than adequate for the task. Grandfather, do something quickly. Uh, uh, you win, sir. Here is your money. I concede. That's a bet. I want to see if the kid can do it. I urge you to reconsider, sir. Please, sir, put it down. The rope won't hold it. It's set to break. I insist you put it down this instant. I can't believe this is happening. Please, sir, I'll give you $100 cash. Just set it down now. All right, kid, do your stuff. <laughs> How do you say, are you out yet, in that Bulgaria talk? <laughs> <laughs> My fault. I shouldn't have let him talk me into this. God in heaven. Mr. Robert Houdin says that what happens on stage isn't as important as what the audience thought happened on stage. Clever fellow, Robert Houdin. I've often said the same thing myself. What do you think happened today, Dr. Gamaldi? How do you suppose I got out of that trunk? You mean you don't know? I remember feeling it begin to fall. And I closed my eyes tightly and waited for it to hit the ground. The next thing I knew, I was standing on the stage. Hmm. Perhaps there wasn't enough oxygen in the trunk, which caused you to lose consciousness. That's why you can't remember how you escaped. That could be it, all right. There you are. Another mystery solved through the application of scientific deduction. Well, I'm for bed. Good night to one and all. I'm very glad you aren't hurt, Eric. Thanks. So am I. Well, good night. Good night. I guess they could be right. I may be passed out or something. That's not what happened at all. 
Yeah, but how else could I... Excuse me, but did you say something? You can speak. Say something else. What did you have in mind? You can speak, but how? Same as everybody does. No magic trick about it. Well, why haven't you said anything before this? Didn't have anything important to say until now. Do Calpurnia and Dr. Grimaldi know about this? No. This has to be our secret. Just between you and me. Promise you won't tell. Or I won't tell you how you got out of that trunk. You know? How? First. Promise. All right. OK, I promise. Not a word. Now, how'd I get out of the trunk, John? How'd I do it? Maybe I shouldn't. Yes, John. You should. I don't think you're ready to know. You're very young. I'm almost 14. I'm practically a man. I suppose you are. Long before the white man came to this land, there was only the Indian. The Indian found that wherever he went, he was confronted by an enemy. So he asked the great spirit for help. You have given us much, Father, the Indian said to the great spirit. But we cannot fish like the bear or hunt like the panther. Give us something that we might survive among our enemies. Magic? Not magic. The power. The power. I will choose one among you, the great spirit said. And I will teach it to him. He will be very special. So the Indian waited for the chosen one to be made known to them. Then one day, a young brave named Walking Dog found himself stranded on a precipice face to face with a hungry panther. Walking Dog knew he was about to die. He shut his eyes tight, calling out to the great spirit. And when the panther leaped, Walking Dog vanished. The panther sailed over the precipice to his own death. Moments later, Walking Dog reappeared. That has been the way ever since. A chosen one is made known, and he is given the chance to learn how to use the power. I vanish out of the trunk? Am I a chosen one? I'm afraid so. Does this mean I get the power? You have it already, but you don't know how to use it. How can I learn? To learn how to use the power, you must become a man of wisdom. You need to learn from a chosen one. John, are you a chosen one? John, could you teach me how to use the power? You said yourself I'm a chosen one. Aren't you supposed to teach me? You may not be ready. You may be unworthy. And then the great spirit will blame me for wasting a lot of his time. But I am ready. I know it. I may not be allowed to teach to a white man. Well, could you ask the great spirit about it? Maybe he'll make an exception in this case. You don't ask the great spirit for anything. 
You wait for him to tell you. I'm gonna need a sign. What kind of sign? I won't know till I see it. Afraid is the Johnsons, my dearest. Grimaldi, we come for the girl. Less by chance you have the money you owe me. Uh, yes, well, I've managed to accumulate a portion of the sum, approximately 50%. You ain't got it, Pa. The gal is mine! Uh, Mr. Johnson, I appeal to you as a reasonable man. A bargain's a bargain, Grimaldi. Our deal was for payment in full. She's real pretty, ain't she, boy? Get your hands off of me. Sir, unhand my granddaughter. She may be your granddaughter, Doc, but she belongs to me now. Where's that preacher? You boys go fetch that preacher back over here. Sir, I demand that. Let me go! Let me go! Let me go! You heard the lady. Let her go. Well, who are you, little fella? I am Eric the Great. Oh, yeah? Well, what makes you so great, Eric? <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. That's real good, kid. Let me show you a trick. Wes, leave that be. No killing. No, I think you better go before there's any more trouble here. Well, you're too late, boy. Because you already got trouble. away. Now! Paul, I was a rattler! What's going on here? What's the ruckus? Wes, put that sidearm away. Marshal, this kid started the whole thing. He attacked me with ribbons. Then he threw a rattlesnake at me. Rattlesnake? Yeah, but I drilled it. There it is. That? I'm telling you, Marshal, that was a rattlesnake. Come on, Wes, let's go. Mount up. This ain't over, kid. You're still promised to me, girl. I'll be back. All right, folks. Break it up. Everybody go on back about your business. Pretty good. Best trick I ever saw. It wasn't a trick. That was the power. There's a big difference, boy. Remember that always. And if someone ever suspects that you have the power, deny it. Deny it until they believe you. Remember that always, too. That's your second lesson. You're teaching me. You got the sign, didn't you? You got the sign. You stood up to those men, knowing that they might kill you. That took courage. I knew then that you were worthy. I told you I was. Oh, boy. Just let those Johnsons try something now. No. You have a lot to learn. For 
one thing, you must never use the power for revenge. Otherwise, it will be taken from you. All right. I promise I won't use the power for revenge. Now, when do we start? At first light. Whoa! Sometimes I think the great spirit is losing his senses. I followed his instructions exactly, 5,000 paces west from the edge of town. I'm sure this is the place. This is the place, all right. John, where did you come from? I was here all the time. You just didn't see me. Will you teach me how to do that? Up here out of nowhere? Later. But I want to learn now. A man of wisdom is a man of patience. Now we have a long way to travel. And we'd better get started. Where are we going to go? To the mountains. Over there. There aren't any mountains over there, John. Close your eyes. Now do you see the mountains? How can I see the mountains with my eyes closed? A man of wisdom can see, even with his eyes shut. Now concentrate, boy. You have certain powers already. Use them. Clear your mind and concentrate. Now do you see him? I think I can see the horizon. A man of wisdom must be able to see beyond the horizon. I'm trying, John. I knew this was going to be a waste of time. I'm leaving. No, John, wait. I can do it. I know I can. It's working. It's working. It's really working. John, the mountains, I can see them. This is wonderful. John? John! John, help me! John, please! Concentrate. Trust your imagination. I'm trying, John. I'm not falling. I'm not falling. I'm not falling! John, I'm flying! This is the greatest trick ever! I feel so free, so powerful, like I can do anything. Imagination is the greatest power a man of wisdom can possess, Eric. Imagination? You mean this isn't real? If you believe it's real, Eric, then it's real. I believe it. I wouldn't mind being someplace a little more familiar. John, what's happening? How'd we get back here? Don't ask me. You did it. I did? 
gosh. I'm getting pretty good at this. You still have a great deal to learn, boy. First, I must teach you how to see. I thought you already taught me how to see. I taught you how to see with your mind. Now I'll teach you how to see with your eyes. I can see with my eyes already. You look, but you don't see. I'll show you. Take a look around. Do you see it? Do you see it all? I think so. Then show it to me. What do you mean? Show it to me. You have the power. Go ahead. Show me what you saw. That doesn't look right to me at all. I think you should try again. How's that? But what about the people? And the horses? Oh, yeah. I forgot about them. And the grass, and the sky, and the trees. And what about the details? Details? You're still looking, Eric. Not seeing. I'm getting pretty good at this, huh? Not too bad for someone so young and inexperienced. But you still have the most important lesson yet to learn. What's that? How to choose the right path. The right path? A man of wisdom knows what he wants and how to get it. He knows how to choose the right path. I don't understand. You want to be the greatest magician in the whole world, don't you? Yes. Then use the power to get it. Right now, just snap your fingers and everything you want can be yours. That's the easy way. Really? No, Eric. Don't listen to him. He's giving you bad advice. A man of wisdom is patient and determined. He knows the easy path is not always the best way. No, Eric. Don't be fooled. This one is lying to you. He's teaching you to become weak. Eric, a man of wisdom, gives to the world as much as it takes. You have the power to be better than all the others. Stronger. Richer. Which one of you do I listen to? Which one of you is telling me the truth? Which one of you is you? It's me, Eric. Here. You have learned the final lesson. This is yours. The power belongs to you now. Don't you have anything to say about this? I'll only say this, Eric. Don't listen to either of us. Listen only to your heart. Take the crystal, Eric. Everything you want can be yours. No, I don't think so. John? John? John?
There, there, my child, don't cry. Everything seems darkest before the dawn. Look, here comes young Eric. What's wrong? What's happened? The Johnsons have sent word they're coming back for Calpurnia, and this time they're bringing a preacher. Where are you going? Stop them. It's no use, Eric. There's too many of them. There's nothing you can do. It's too dangerous. Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. Oh, by the way, do you know where John Parker is? Haven't seen him all day. Well, when he comes back, don't tell him where I've gone. <laughs> That? Well, it looks like that kid from the sideshow, Wes. You know, one made a fool of you in town. Oh, he made a big mistake coming out here. He's on Ireland now. Johnson! What are you planning to do? Hi, John. What are you doing here? I had a feeling you'd come out here today. Somebody's got to stop him, John. That Wesley Johnson's got no right to take Calpurnia's hand, debt or no debt. I told you, you can't use the power for revenge. I wasn't going to use it against them, John. Honest. I was just going to try to reason with them. I'd only use the power to defend myself. That'd be okay, wouldn't it? Self-defense, huh? What did you have in mind? Well... For example... I thought it would be okay to do... this. No, you couldn't do that. Oh. Well... Could I do this? That might be permitted. Say, that boy was fast. Huh? How'd he do that? I don't know, but he ain't gonna do it again. Wesley, put that rifle away. He's still slowing down, Pa. How about if I did this? What's going on here? I'm afraid I have to say no. Well, if I couldn't do that, then I know I couldn't do this. What in tarnation is going on here? You definitely cannot do that. I don't know what's going on here, and I don't care. But what about that kid? What about my gal? That, that there's your business, huh, Wes? <laughs> Get on out of here, Jack. Get out. No thanks. He can have her. Yeah, come on. John, I'm really glad we had this conversation. I wouldn't want to abuse the power or anything. You are showing definite signs of becoming a man of wisdom. And now, I have something to give you. Does this mean that I know how to use the power now? This is just the first step in a life of many steps. Learning to use the power is a lifelong process. 
I have taught you all I can. The rest is up to you. I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe this is happening. I give you Eric, Prince of the Air. Why do you do these things, Eric? I'm going to be the greatest magician in the world. We magicians must stick together. Eric, you're a magician. For you, Mama. I can't be a locksmith for you. I'm a magician. But Eric! I've got to try, Theo. If I don't, I'll never really know. I'm also an escape artist. I can escape from anything. That's bad. I want to see if the kid can do it. Please, sir, put it down. The rope won't hold it. It's set to break. I can't believe this is happening. Are you all right? I think so. How did I get in here? What happened? You've been unconscious, my boy, for three days. Three days? Since the accident. What accident? The accident when you did the trunk trick. Don't you remember? You were in it when the rope broke. But I got out of the trunk. You didn't get out. Fortunately, you were thrown clear before the trunk smashed a bit at the bottom of the canyon. You've been unconscious since then. But what about the Johnsons? Very strange about the Johnsons. They left town about a week ago. Nobody really knows why. Very mysterious. They just up and left. Of course they left. It's because John and I chased them out. Hey, didn't we, John? Tell them how we chased them out. John can't speak, Eric. You know that. Yes, he can speak. He just doesn't speak because he doesn't have anything important to say. John doesn't speak, Eric, because his tongue was cut out by scalp hunters when he was a boy. You mean it didn't really happen? Better rest, boy. You've had a nasty bump on your head. It's obviously confused you. It all seems so real. It seems so real. It all seemed so real. Yes, well, there you are. The closest I ever came to a mystical experience, and it was only an hallucination. No, 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 thank you. No, I've uh, had enough. Your one mystical experience, and it was just a dream. <laughs> the result of a rather nasty smack on the head. I'm afraid so. Well, what became of the others? Hmm? The Indian, the gal, Dr. Grimaldi. Grimaldi passed away two years ago, God rest his soul, at the Steel Pier in Atlantic City, where he was still performing the Palingenesia and peddling his wizard oil. 25 cents, a quarter of a dollar. And the girl, Calpurnia, <laughs> what became of your great love? It faded and became great affection. About a year after I left, she married a newspaper fellow from St. Louis and was, at last word, expecting her fourth child. My one consolation was that she named her eldest boy Eric. And the Indian, what happened to him? One morning, shortly after I awoke from my strange dream, John Parker vanished. 
He went out to gather some firewood and never returned. We searched and searched, but could find no trace of him. Grimaldi thought that he had gone back to his tribe. What did you think? At the time, I thought that he had changed himself into a wolf again and disappeared into the wilderness. But now, I think he probably went back to his tribe. Oh, God bless my soul. Look at the time. 5 a.m. We've talked the entire night away. <laughs> well, I, I must be off. You know, Houdini, you never cease to amaze me. Well, my dear chap, many thanks for the evening's entertainment. <laughs> all of it. The pleasure is all mine, Arthur. I, uh... I expect to see you again. Oh, good night, my dear old chap. Good night, Arthur. You know, Houdini, perhaps what you say about the magical is true. Perhaps some things are just tricks. Hmm? Perhaps some things just are, Arthur. Perhaps some things just are. <laughs>